Good evening. Welcome to our river cruising online event hosted by AffordableTours.com and Avalon Waterways. My name is Rod Fernandez and I am the co-president of AffordableTours.com. I want to thank all of you for attending tonight's online event. As a thank you for attending tonight's event, we will present after the River Cruise Talk all the Avalon offers that are currently available to you, including an exclusive offer only for tonight's participants. In addition to these offers, please do not forget that, as always, simply by booking with AffordableTours.com, you will receive an additional 10% savings off the River Cruise rate on top of the other great offers you will see tonight. Finally, this evening we are going to raffle a $500 travel certificate grand prize toward an Avalon River cruise. The winner will be chosen from one of tonight's participants and will be announced at the end of the presentation. This evening we have a real treat for you. Patrick Clark, Managing Director of Avalon Waterways, is standing by ready to give you a 30-minute presentation about river cruising. Patrick has been in the river cruise industry for over 12 years and he is one of the world's foremost experts on river cruising. I believe you'll find his talk extremely informative. You will also have a chance to ask Patrick questions once his presentation is complete. I now present Mr. Patrick Clark. Thank you very much, Rod. I really appreciate the opportunity that AffordableTours.com has provided Avalon and allowed us tonight to present to so many of your clients the Avalon River Cruises. We hope they'll find the evening informative, interesting, and enjoyable. I'm often asked by many people at presentations, and I have been over the years, what's the biggest difference between ocean cruising and river cruising? This image you see on the screen now is the Avalon Creativity in Paris. The ship docks a 10-minute walk from the Eiffel Tower. You're in the heart of Paris. Access to all of the wonderful things that Paris has to offer. The Arc de Triomphe, the Champs-Élysées, shopping, restaurants so many museums, the people, the culture of Paris, and that is what a river cruise affords you. All these cities, small towns and villages, up and down the rivers, the legendary rivers of Europe, you get a chance to see firsthand as these ships dock right in the heart of the city. You cruise through a country, and that's something you can't really have on an ocean cruise. When we ask our clients, what are the reasons you choose a river cruise, here are the four things most often we hear. They love the idea of unpacking once, your hotel room floats with you, it's hassle-free and relaxing. Most river cruise ships are on average about 140 to 150 passengers. So in the course of a week, you can meet everybody you on the ship. It's that small ship ambiance that you truly get to enjoy on a river cruise. There's open seating dining, so you can be sitting with someone new each night. We have lectures and entertainment in the lounge. There's opportunities at cocktail hour. We provide excursions, sometimes on a coach, sometimes walking. Again, all opportunities to meet new friends, to make new acquaintances. And many of the customers um, really end up with friendships that endure for years. The proximity of attractions, you just saw that shot of Paris. The one on the screen is in Budapest. It's that proximity that really provides the enrichment, the experience, where you get a chance to not only see the sites and the shops, and you get to meet the people and truly feel the culture and the history of the destination. And the last thing we hear most often is the all-inclusive value. For anybody today, it's important that you get good value for your money, particularly on a vacation. One thing about a river cruise, you will know what the cost of your holiday is before you leave, because it is all-inclusive. A river cruise provides you accommodation, 
all your meals, regional wines, choices with dinners, excursions, lectures, entertainment. It's all included for the price. So there won't be any surprises when you come home and look at your next month's credit card bill. Tonight we'll touch on some of the things that Avalon has to offer. We have a young fleet. The average age is two years. When Avalon was established as a river cruise company, actually just a short six years ago, we decided on developing a river cruise style that was contemporary, modern design. So you'll find on an Avalon ship lots of uh, polished metals, glass, um, vibrant colors, panoramic views, and that's something we tried to make sure we have on every ship that we add to the fleet. Large staterooms throughout, 172 square feet minimum, larger, of course, for suites. And the majority of all of the staterooms on our ships feature sliding glass doors and French balconies. Fine dining, I've mentioned the complimentary regional wines, that's inclusive. Lots of dining choices you hear in, in just a few moments. And as part of the Globus family, we have the benefit of Globus's 80 years of experience designing land programs, providing that experience to design the itineraries, the shore excursions, and down to the selection of the local guide so you can be sure you will have an enriching experience. The next slide is, ah. we often uh, talk about Avalon, what we have to offer, but it's very nice to hear independent verifications that the product that we offer, the quality of the service, and meeting the expectation of our guests is indeed something that is satisfying our clients. These independent travel publications, online travel companies have acknowledged and recognized Avalon River Cruise itineraries, the ships that we have, and the overall level of service and the satisfaction it delivers to clients. So we're very proud, pleased to receive these. But it also gives you an independent verification that you will get a quality River Cruise experience with Avalon. We have three styles of ships in the Avalon fleet. What you're looking at now is the Tranquility. It's a twin cruiser, 135 meters, and the itineraries she operates on are the longer itineraries between Amsterdam and Budapest, from Budapest down to Bucharest and the Black Sea, and on the Danube. Unique with this style of ship is the engines and the wheelhouse are in the rear, and it affords the, you, the client, one of the quietest river cruise rides on the rivers because of the location of the engines. And then as you look at the sun deck, clients can go all the way forward and enjoy an even more panoramic view of the sights that you see as you cruise down the river. We have five 110-meter ships, smaller with a capacity of 138 to 140 passengers. We employ these and we deliver these into the fleet because it's given us access to new rivers. We've been able now to offer river cruises in France on the Seine from Paris up to Normandy, Burgundy and Provence through the south of France on the Rhone. We also can get access to the Moselle in the western part of Germany where it goes up to Luxembourg and even on the Rhine. It provides us opportunities to get to the smaller villages where the destinations that you can enjoy um, are available. Docking, docking positions are, are fewer, so these smaller vessels really give us the opportunity to expand those destinations. All along, the clients have influenced the design of our, our vessels. Avalon has not only received recommendations and suggestions from clients on amenities, what they'd like to see on the ship, the kinds of service they've offered, we've also received them from our cruise director from our travel agent partners, even from our operational staff in Europe. That inspiration has led to the newest design ship that we have in our fleet and the third type, the Avalon Panorama. 
it's the industry's first sweet ship and we believe will raise the bar for river cruising as a travel category in Europe. It starts with 64 200 square foot panorama suites. They're larger than anything else on the river, a full third larger. There are two 300 square foot royal suites. We designed an open air balcony which in effect allows you to really feel that you're outdoors without compromising space. Wall, a, a total wall 11 foot wide of glass that opens a full 7 foot. There's pan panoramic views throughout the ship, not only from the stateroom, but from every place. This will give you an appreciation. This is a shot of one of the panorama suites. You can see what a breathtaking view you get right from the comfort of your, of your, of your suite. We have, by designing a larger stateroom, we provide an opportunity, a sitting area, where you can enjoy company, you can have guests in for drinks. And notice the, the uh, fine polished chocolate wood recess lighting and things you can't see like the, um, the noise prevention insulation in the walls that provide a better experience for you. The bathroom is what you might expect in a nice resort. Marble, spacious shower, um, places for toiletries, makeup mirrors, recess lighting, a very comfortable and pleasant place to, to, uh, to be and, and truly one that is of a high standard. The inspired comfort, as we call it, and you'll see some examples in a moment, we've designed our own comfort collection by Avalon, the bedding, choices of pillows, high-end uh, baths, essential products, robes and slippers in the rooms, complimentary water, the marble, all of these things are part of what we offer on the panorama vessel. This is a shot of the, of the bed. It uh, can be a, a double or twins. It's got Egyptian cotton linens, uh, European duvets, and the bath products are L'Occitane, wonderful quality. And you can see that as well with the soap uh, available and but nice things that fine resorts provide is what you can experience on this panel panorama ship. Now here's a shot of a stateroom that's our category E, the lowest category on the ship. And I've got this here because one I want you to see that we offer the 172 square foot stateroom on every ship no matter the category. It has all of the amenities that every other stateroom has except it has windows as opposed to the French balconies and sliding glass door. Next you'll see a shot of what 85% of all of the staterooms look like. And included in the stateroom is a vanity, uh, there's a safe, mini bar, flat screen TV, choice of channels and DVDs, lots of things that are also a, provided for you and for your enjoyment. If you're a week or two on the ship, having a closet with additional space so you can take care of putting your things away is important. They're a third larger than uh, the average. Your suitcases go under the bed, so they're comfortably out of the way. Here's a shot of one of our junior suites. More space for entertaining, uh, more window space for viewing. I'm now going to give you just a look at some of the public space to give you an appreciation of what you would be experiencing as you leave your stateroom and explore the ship. This is when you come on in. This is the reception area. And to the right, you will see some tables and, and chairs. We also offer some, some computer terminals for guests to check their emails and you know send things to friends. So that's available. You, you can see the cruise director, he was sitting there just uh, on the, near the, uh, the front desk. This is the go-to person on the ship. He or she is the one responsible for coordinating all the shore excursions, making sure the entertainment's on time, providing you port lecture uh, as you arrive to a port each new night, compiling the daily newsletter. You will get at the start of your ship the folder which says memories of your cruise, and each day when you go to a new port, 
You're going to get uh, letters which give you sites of interest, uh, history at a glance, maybe the wine of the regions, what that city or town is known for, maps, suggested shopping tips, and maps and other things that you can put in the folder so at the end you'll have a nice collection of where you've been. And this is something your cruise director is going to be providing you each day. If you like some exercise or you find you're eating too much at dinner, we have a fitness center on board. And I must say it's kind of a fun experience to be on a treadmill kind of jogging along while your ship's sailing down the river and you're watching the sights or people are seeing you as, they, as you pass by. But that's available to all our guests. We have a beauty salon as well for people to make appointments or get their hair done. This is the back lounge on our vessels. And it's probably one of my favorite places. Why? It's a great place to start the day. The early riser breakfast is served in here. You can't see it off to the right. We have a coffee and espresso machine available 24-7 where you can get the coffees of your choice. There's hot tea. You get cappuccinos. We always have cookies and things and fruit out there for people. But it's where you can start with the early riser breakfast. It's all glassed in. And it's a wonderful, beautiful, open, airy area. And people enjoy getting together to play cards, read a book. We have a small library in here. Or just enjoy your, just some time by yourself. That's the club lounge. Here's a shot now. Because if you'd have walked through the door when I showed you the uh, entrance area, you'd come into the bar area and lounge. And this is where people gather every night. There's a cocktail hour with uh, you know, some festivities. We have a pianist playing. They offer drinks of the day. So it's a place often people will gather before dinner and then maybe afterwards. Now, if you were sitting at the bar and looking to the, to, the, for, to the bow of the ship, this is the main lounge. In here is where the entertainment will occur, where the port lectures will occur, where people will gather just to enjoy scenery, to relax, to have a drink as well. So this is kind of a main hub and you would be in there enjoying yourself daily. This is the sun deck. Again, another place to have a, a beverage of your choice and look at the scenery. Forward of these of this couple, we have lounge chairs, some out in the sun, some covered, so you can be enjoying uh, getting a little suntan while you're watching the scenery or just enjoying a nice balmy day. Apart from a comfortable bed, we know food is also an important thing to please our clients with. There are nine dining choices through the course of the day, and I'll hit some of the high highlights. We have a full buffet breakfast with a omelet station. We even offer sparkling wine if you'd wanted to start with a mimosa, and a full range of cold and hot dishes, cereals and fruits, freshly made bread from the ship, yogurts, and then all of the egg dishes. Uh, and every day there's new hot dishes. Could be waffles, plenty of uh, croissants, and and other things to enjoy. You could almost eat something different every day and not repeat it. There's an early riser and a late riser breakfast, which is uh, croissants, coffee, juice. We have a lunch, full buffet in the main dining room, pasta carving station, uh, pasta and a carving station, and salad soups, lots of desserts, plenty of choices uh, every day. Dinner is a sit-down, off-the-menu choice, and we'll talk about, uh, give you an example of a menu in a moment. Wines, we talked about coffee, tea, espresso throughout the day. And for those that are still hungry, about 10.30 at night, we offer night fare. This is a shot of one of the uh, dining rooms on our ship. There's seating configurations of two, four, six, and eight. So you can sit with friends that you make or be on your own. You have that choice. This is just one of the tables set for dinner. Uh, the, the, the chefs on board are really committed to a lot of local ingredients. Uh, the regional cuisine we try to offer as we cruise through the area, lots of chef special choices, the, the, the special dinners that they like to create. We're bringing on fresh ingredients all the time. And we take care of dining and um, the needs of people who have requirements for salt-free, vegan, whatever you require, we can manage to accommodate your needs. You simply need to advise in advance. Here's a, a shot of some of the hors d'oeuvres on one of the ships. 
I think the uh, it looks tasty. I hope most of you have had dinner. This is a sample menu off of one of our ships from last year. It happens to be Felicity. On the right, you will see what you get to choose from. Amos bouche is a, uh, a sort of a French expression for a, a pallet starter. And it usually is served in a little small, like almost shot glass. And it may be pureed vegetables with some spices, something to kind of get the palate ready for the choices and selection for the upcoming dinner. Salad is served, and there's a choice of soups. And in this particular menu, followed by um, scampi risotto, then a palate cleanser, sorbet, and then a choice of three courses, one always uh, vegetarian. This is seafood and veal. Four choices for dessert. Coffee, tea as well, of course, uh, throughout the meal. And if that doesn't satisfy you, on the left-hand side, we have standing uh, grilled chicken, roasted salmon, salmon, or a Caesar salad. And these are the wines we served with this dinner. A nice Chardonnay. These are all from a French area, a Rosé, and a Merlot. And as you'll see, a little chef's recommendation down there, um, our chef on this ship has selected certain ones that are his recommendations for evening. And it happened to be the, the cream brulee dessert and the, the perch, the pike perch uh, seafood dish. So lots of food, lots of choices. One of my favorites, we offer three or four times in a given cruise, what, depending on the weather, our open air bistro, where we basically offer a barbecue grill outside. So you can be having uh, barbecue with salads, drinks, cruising down the river, sitting outdoors, uh, waving to the guests that are there on the bikes, but really enjoying yourself. And it's a lot of fun, and people really enjoy it. You sign up. We can take about 40 guests per, per sitting, but everybody gets an opportunity to, uh, to make sure that they sample the open-air bistro. Food, uh, wine, a good stateroom, lots of, lots of areas to uh, view is part of it, but the other part is the enrichment, the, the choices that you will get that will help the experience of a river cruise be memorable. And that's where our, our Globus heritage comes in. There are shore excursions that they've helped select are included. Every day there's a, there's a shore excursion, maybe a coach, depending on the location, maybe a walking tour of the city, Walking tours we provide at different speeds, so if you want something a little faster, something a little bit more moderate, you have that choice. And all of the short periods we provide uh, headsets, so you don't have to be with your guide every moment. If you're in a museum and there's other groups in there, other people, you can be drifting away looking at a favorite painting and still hear your local guide. They We've gotten great acknowledgement about our, our, our shore programs, and people truly enjoy it. This is an example. I was on this cruise, and it's in Burn Castle on the Moselle. This lady is a local resident of Burn Castle on a local guide. She was passionate about sharing her charming city, and it was charming. Cobblestone streets, they're a wine-producing region. She shared with us the local characters, the history. And it, she made it come alive. And that's one of the benefits and part of the enrichment that your experience will, uh, will be that you'll experience on one of our river cruises. <clears throat> Lots of choices. There's over 100 cruise options, starting from three nights to 21 nights, plus land programs that can be added to it. There's theme departures, cruise only for those that have limited time. And we can add monograms, another one of the Globus family brands, great city stays, which provide you some independent opportunities to add to a river cruise. As you can see here, this is a map of Europe. We are on every major river. We offer uh, cruises from three nights to 21 nights, I said, uh, on, in, on all of the major rivers through all of the major towns and cities that Europe has to offer. And there are five popular itineraries, which uh, we're now going to give you an opportunity to choose which one you'd like to talk about. But while we're giving you that opportunity to poll, the five 
really ones that we find to be the most popular, chosen most often, are the Burgundy and Provence. That's through the south of France. It's a seven-night itinerary. And it provides two nights in Paris and one night in the south of France. Paris to Normandy, that's a tremendous experience. Paris, of course, and then cruising through some of those lovely areas where the great Impressionist artists painted, lived, and then all the way up to Normandy, which is truly a, 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 a historical experience that will move anybody. In Germany, we offer the Rhine, the Romantic Rhine, seven-night cruise between Zurich and Amsterdam. So you get three, four countries. And that's a seven-night, very popular one. And then two on the Danube. Between Budapest and Nuremberg with Prague. And the other one is Prague plus Budapest. So. should shortly have and it looks like the Danube so we'll talk a little bit about the Danube that was the number one itinerary chosen tonight so let's spend a couple of minutes giving you an idea what the Danube has to offer I mentioned there's two the legendary Danube and the blue Danube discovery both have the same seven-night itinerary, a cruising itinerary between Budapest and Nuremberg, but we'll talk a little bit about the legendary Danube. You begin your journey in the city of Prague, uh, truly a magnificent European city, city that was untouched for the most part in World War II, so so many of its historic buildings and churches and uh, bridges are, are still intact. You'll, you'll spend three nights there. There's included uh, city sightseeing, opportunities to explore on your own for shopping, and then you're transferred from there to the city of Nuremberg on the Danube. Uh, again, a historical site where the Nuremberg trials were, were held and got a lot of the World War II heritage there, but a beautiful city in its own right, and you start there with a, with a city tour, and then you're now cruising. Uh, the next port of call is Regensburg, one of Germany's uh, remarkable city, a university town, wonderful square, one that you really feel you're getting into this sense of stepping off the ship and being right in the heart of the city. From there, we go down towards the Austrian border to Passau, which is the where the Hills River and the Danube come together. It's a, a, a lovely city in its own right. We cruise to Linz, which is a in now in Austria, a small village right down on the river, and uh, it is one that you can explore by walking. A beautiful, great example of one of the small villages that you can explore on a river cruise. And then from there down to Melk, which has got the historic Melk Abbey with the organ concert and some of the most famous uh, paintings and uh, an architecture that is around. It's a wonderful day. And then you cruise through from there into Vienna through the Wachau Valley. This is Austria's primary wine-growing growing region. So not only is the scenery spectacular, but you get to see these vineyards that literally come down the sides of the hills to the water. Then Vienna, you know, the city of music. And there, this is a big city, so you're going to explore it by coach around the Ringstrasse, which is a circle, a, a, a road that circles the city. And you can see what some of the wonderful musicians have created, have an opportunity to take in a, a, a Strauss or Mozart concert, uh, taste the famous soccer tort that they provide, and see so many of these wonderful historic Baroque buildings that are part of the scenery in Vienna. And then on to Budapest, another big city. So you've got a nice mix of small towns, villages, and big city in Budapest, the, uh, is the largest city in Hungary. And you saw that image I showed earlier where it's a city you dock right in the middle and you're right at the historic parliament and it's a city split. It's a Buddha and Pest. Wonderful way to finish up your 
legendary Danube cruise. And the Blue Danube discovery allows you two additional nights in Budapest. It's a great first way to see Europe in one of Europe's magical rivers. Here's the Romantic Rhine uh, of seven night. Again, very popular first time because the Rhine's so well known. Seven night cruise between uh, Zurich and Amsterdam. Priced very well at uh, $17.99, so it's very affordable and for someone that has limited time. And, and it, again, it, it gives you four countries. You get Switzerland, France, Germany, and Holland. We offer theme cruises. For those of you with passions that you'd like to, you, to explore in Europe and combine it with a river cruise, we have some wonderful opportunities. We have wine and food cruises. And these are cruises. We have four different itineraries, south of France, the Moselle, and the Danube, where you get everything that's included in a normal cruise, plus you get three to four additional events. In the case of the wine cruise, you have lectures on the history of wine in that region onboard tastings, a visit to a vineyard to, to actually see where the wine's being produced and, and meet the winemaker. And then what my sort of centerpiece, which I call it, of the cruise is a gala wine and food pairing evening. Seven course dinner, different wine with each course explained by your cruise director or the wine host on board so you understand why it was paired, what are some of the nuances. Wonderful, fun evening and a great way to enjoy a wine cruise. Music is similar. We've got a 14-night a across the heart of Europe cruise, which covers musical development of, of, of musical development in Europe from oompa ba bands to the classics. Lectures on board, visits to some of the famous uh, conductors' homes, the people that have written the music, and that you'll also see performances. And so that's a very exciting one to cover for those with musical. Jazz, another music theme in the south of France. Every year in the city of Vienne, there's an international jazz festival that attracts musicians from all over the world. You get that, lectures. We get some jazz musicians on board, learn about jazz in France and how it was developed. And the new this year is an art and impressionist cruise. And that's Paris up to Normandy, where you literally are going to have a chance to learn so much about the great uh, Renaissance artists, particularly the Impressionists, go to museums, again, lectures on boards, Givenet, where you can visit uh, some of Monet's gardens, where he painted some of his famous paintings, and other things on that. So great opportunities to combine some, some hobbies or passions with the river cruise. We offer other opportunities in other parts of the world, exotic ones, China, for example, there's a wonderful cruise for someone who's maybe been to Europe or looking for something a little more uh, uh, diverse. We've got 13-day ones, 12 days, Beijing, Shanghai, uh, Xi'an, and it's all, all the itineraries we offer include a three or four night river cruise between Chongqing and Yishang, which is down where the Three Gorges Dam is. So you get a chance to see modern, growing China, like Shanghai and Beijing, coupled with some of the historic China, which is so much about its history and its culture. You'll see the small cities on the Yangtze that have remained largely unchanged for centuries. And you can add Hong Kong on afterwards, or there's other ones that extend uh, up in China, also to Mongolia and Tibet. My bucket list itinerary is the Galapagos. It's a unbelievable collection of islands off of Ecuador that Darwin first discovered and it's this where the origin of species uh, originated. Where you see on one island uh, animals that are cold climate coexisting with animals that are from the warm climate. Uh, penguins, for example, with, with warm weather climate uh, animals like flamingos coexisting on the same. It's magical, fascinating, and people also then extend to Ecuador for visits there and, of course, Peru for Machu Picchu and Cusco. Now, we've got some special offers for you that uh, 
Rod spoke about early, there's some special Avalon ones. We've got on select itineraries, buy one, get one free. It's a phenomenal opportunity and wonderful deal. 50% off on some other itineraries with up to a full $1,700 off per couple on, on various selected itineraries. And then on any itinerary in 2011, you can get 10% off uh, the land price when you pay in full by March 1. And a special $500 off per person on that bucket list Galapagos vacation. And now Rod has got some additional special things he would like to tell you about. Yes, thank you, Patrick. Um, as always, as you know, by booking with AffordableTours.com, you will save an additional 10% off the Avalon price. And that is, of course, on top of these other great offers that Patrick was just mentioning. And uh, for tonight's participants, we're also offering a $50 extra savings when you book before March 1st. And to get that, simply mention this offer when booking your cruise. And finally, we are going to announce the winner of the $500 Avalon Waterways Travel Certificate. And that winner will be picked from one of tonight's attendees. And here we go. Congratulations, Nancy Martin. Nancy Martin, you won, you've just won the $500 Avalon Waterways Travel Certificate. So we are very excited for you. And, um, you know, that will be good towards a uh, Avalon Waterways River Cruise uh, this year or next. And I will send you an email with details regarding how to receive your $500 certificate. Um, just want to remind everyone that in order to claim the other offers like the $50 extra savings or the buy one get one free or if you have any questions or would, or if you would like to make a booking, please call our offices tomorrow uh, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time at our number which is 1-800-935-2620 and we have uh, quite a few Avalon Waterways River Cruise Specialists uh, that will be happy to assist you. And uh, I would like to thank Patrick for that wonderful presentation. I'm ready to go on a river cruise now after watch, uh, listening to that presentation. It, it, it was really, really exciting. So thank you, Patrick. And uh, now we will open it up to questions. So please feel free to type your questions in the chat box. And uh, we have uh, moderators that Patrick will introduce in a second, and uh, they will queue the questions up to Patrick, and they will be answered for you. Uh, and again, from uh, myself and all your friends at AffordableTours.com, we want to thank you very much for attending tonight's uh, webinar. So uh, thanks again, and, and, and thank you, Patrick. Great. Uh Ali Ali is one of my Avalon colleagues, and she's been kind of coordinating the questions. So, Ali, uh, what's the first one? All right, Patrick, thank you so much again. Uh, first question comes from Thomas. Thomas wrote in, Patrick, and said, is a tie and jacket required for dinner? Good question, and the River Cruise dinner experience is casual. Uh, there is typically a jacket for the captain's farewell dinner and also for the first evening, which is the captain's reception. We recommend a jacket, no ties necessary, it can be an open collared shirt, and for the ladies, uh, a smart pantsuit or perhaps a, a dress that they would like to wear. Apart from that, it's really a casual environment, sort of business casual kind of attire normally at, uh, at dinner, but it's a casual, that's one of the nice things about river cruising, it is, it's a relaxing, casual environment. Great. Patrick, Diana is curious about bottled water. Is that included in the cruise price? Good question, too, Diana, and yes, it is. You get bottled water in your room each day. Okay. She also is asking about pricing for traveling solo. Do we do solo travelers? We do. We have a couple of different ways, uh, several different ways, actually. One, there is a single supplement where you pay an additional fee and you occupy the stateroom yourself. We have, for those that are really adventuresome, a guaranteed share program 
where you can be paired up. And if there isn't somebody same sex to pair up with, you would end up with the stateroom yourself. And then occasionally we do offer on select itineraries uh, some special promotions where we might waive the single supplement. So there are kind of three options. OK. We had another question asked from Bubba about, will the webinar be archived so that they can look at it later? That question may be, Ellie, you can answer. Yeah, we are recording the session right now, Bubba, and so you are more than welcome to watch again to share it with some friends. And definitely, your friends at affordabletours.com can be able to get you the link for that archive. Then, yes. uh, oh, uh, go Ellie. ahead. Yes, Ellie, uh, this is uh, Rob Fernandez. And I believe we're going to send everybody an email correct, uh, with the link to the archived webinar where they can see it again later. Very true. So Bubba, tomorrow and all of you, you will receive an automatic thank you for attending with access to the recording. And then also, if any of your friends might have missed it, they'll too receive a copy of the recording. Another question, Patrick, from Cindy about shore excursions. Are they included in the price? And is there usually a tour each day? Yes, the shore excursion is included in the price. There is one every day. We have a local escort, a local guide that conducts them, and we keep the group small. We, we provide, as I mentioned earlier, the audio headset with it. So yes, you can expect one each day. And on occasion, what we'll do on some of the itineraries, we might have two or three optional ones. These are ones that we do on occasion get people asking about, but we don't include them because not everybody wants to go on them. So there may be two or three optionals on a free afternoon, but you can expect one included each day of the cruise and in some cases, even a second one. Great. Patrick, you had talked about having included wine complimentary poured at dinner. Patricia's question is about soft drinks. Do we offer any soft drinks at lunch or dinner? We offer a choice of soft drinks, beer, or wine at dinner. And at lunch, we offer complimentary. And those, are, by the way, are all complimentary at dinner. And we offer complimentary soft drinks at lunch. All right. And what about um, local wines? Ray wants to know, can he bring him on board the ship from various cities he visits? A man after my own heart. Um, <laughs> yes, you can. We, if you want to bring it into the restaurant to try, there's a cork each charge. It's nine euros. But you certainly can bring wine on and enjoy it yourself in, the, in your room or if you want to you know, enjoy it with friends somewhere else on the ship. But if you do bring it in it to the restaurant at dinner, there would be a cork each charge. What about air-conditioned staterooms and cabins are heated, Diane was asking. They're both they're temperature controlled, heat and air conditioning. And at each stateroom has a temperature control uh, knob that they can you know, adjust according to their needs. All right, just a big general question that we all love to talk about. Why should they choose Avalon over other river cruises? Well, I think Avalon, as I touched on earlier, offers offers clients the benefit of a, a new river cruise ship. They're new sparkling ships, large staterooms, and you can compare that to any others. The Globus Connection provides an enriching program, and we have such a wide selection of itinerary choice that we can really meet the time and budget of virtually anybody. And I think together with that and what I believe is a truly high standard of service is the primary reason. And I'll close with one thing. 98% of our customers who complete a survey on board the ship tell us that we have met or exceeded their expectations. And an equal number would be more than happy to recommend it to a family member or friend. So that, perhaps, to me, is the best endorsement for why you should choose Avalon. Absolutely. And just a, a few more questions about the, the land excursions. And are there optional excursions? And about how much time in port, those kinds of things. Well, it's, um, it depends. I know that's not a very concrete answer, but it depends on the itinerary. You know, for example, um, if, you're, if you're on the Rhine and you start in Zurich, you would be departing Zur uh, sorry, if you start in Basel, you'd be departing Basel uh, that evening, and then you'd be kind of cruising overnight and arriving in Strasbourg. So you'd begin your excursion the next day. So what we try to do is stretches where we want to be in a port in daylight 
to provide a shore excursion, we'd maybe be doing some cruising at night. And then in that case, you'd have a morning shore excursion and some time after, uh, you know, a couple of hours in the afternoon to be on your own. Then as you go further up the Rhine between Rudesheim and Cologne, there is a stretch uh, what is really the Rhine Gorge where the castles just completely dot the both sides of the river. And that we always try to do in daylight because it's spectacular. People want to take photographs. So it depends. But typically, you can expect to have uh, some extra time in most ports on your own or occasionally for an optional afternoon shore excursion. Uh, and sailing will try to optimize the best times to be at different points along the river. Great. And I think the last question that we're getting is about France. Patrick, could you tell us about if we and where we travel the canals of France? Where we travel in the canals? Yeah, or if we travel in France. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, yeah. Yes, uh, we've got the south of France in Burgundy and Provence. You embark in Chalon and cruise south to the Mediterranean, to the city of Arles. And there's port stops all the way along. Lyon, which is a wonderful university town, Avignon, there is Vivier. Uh, all of these ports are stopped at along the way. There are, um, it's a seven-night itinerary. And then from there, you get transferred uh, to Nice. Now, it reverses itself. And you can start at that end and then cruise north to Chalon and then Paris for two nights. Then separately, we have a Paris to Normandy which I think I talked about earlier. Uh, and you can combine both of them for a Grand France. And we have many, 25% of the customers do that. They combine them both. So they're basically doing from the Mediterranean to the North Sea right through France. And a really diverse culture when you, you actually get on the cruise and realize the different influence in different parts of France. I, I hope I answered the question. I'm not sure I, I did, but I hope I did. Definitely. I'll actually show that Paris itinerary that you were just talking about while you answer one probably final question. Um, actually, two. Do, you, do we stay in ports until late in the evening so that they can experience some evenings in port, says Diane? And that, again, will depend on the itinerary. Clearly, in Paris, you're in Paris overnight. And it, it, that is a place you would definitely want at least one night. Um, you, we end up, for example, in Rouen because from there we go out to the Normandy beaches, so you have an overnight in Rouen. And you wouldn't in Conflans because that's a day stop. So it, it depends, and I'd almost have to go through a specific itinerary and try to point out which are night and which aren't. And again, it's trying. we've really thought this through as best we can to optimize where there's wonderful opportunities to enjoy the city sites, and people like to do that. So we pick places and try to overnight. I mentioned Lyon. Leon's got a three-star Michelin restaurant in it. And you can actually make a reservation, and we're there in time for one to actually enjoy this Michelin three-star restaurant. It's a university town. It's got wonderful music and, and all kinds of shopping and wonderful sites. So we, we plan an overnight there. So it will depend on the itinerary, but you can always be sure there would be several opportunities for being in ports where you can explore the evening in that city. And Patrick, you have another Patrick on the call, and he's curious about this Sun cruise. Are there excursions to Normandy and other World War II sites? Yeah, it is a, a full-day excursion out to Normandy beaches. And we go to Normandy. You get to see that beach. We go to the museum out there. And there's also another very moving stop. And I, it's, a, it's a, a, a series of statues or things like that. I can't quite remember it. Uh, but it is a full day, and you truly get a chance to experience firsthand what happened that many years ago uh, when, when the invasion occurred. And lots of very good local guides who can really talk about the history and share the experience and really try to recreate what it was like on that day. So yes, you will get a great opportunity to visit Normandy. All right, Patrick, thank you for all those questions. The last question from Carol, she was asking, what website do you go to right now to look at the available dates for these cruises? So maybe, Rod, you'd like to tell us. Of course, it's at the bottom of their screen, but I'll let you tell them the website. 
Well, of course, you can always go to affordabletours.com, and you can call one of our river cruise specialists at 800-935-2620. Uh, they will be more than happy to uh, let you know what dates are available. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's one of the best ways uh, you can do it. Or um, the Avalon Waterways website is another way to do it. Yes, thank you, Rod, and I would agree. It's, I would recommend going to affordabletours.com uh, and get the information. They will have all of the available dates, cabins, itineraries. But if you're just looking tonight, the avalonwaterways.com site will give you all the different itineraries and different dates and some information about the itineraries if you want to just browse. Okay, we answered all the questions. That's it. Good. Well, I would just like to close and say my thanks again to Rod and AffordableDoors.com for allowing us the opportunity to talk about river cruising with Avalon. And I would like to thank all of you who joined us. I hope you did learn something about river cruising, that you found it interesting, that we whet your appetite. And if you've never been on a river cruise, make 2011 the year that you do. And if you see that image on the screen, just picture yourself on the deck of that ship, on the sun deck, enjoying your favorite beverage, looking at this magnificent scenery. You'll have a memorable vacation that you will truly enjoy and experience of a lifetime. Thank you very much.